Hi, I'm Gavin Wood. For Tobin Brothers' Say It Now campaign, I'm here to tell you about all the people that have helped me along the way. The people that started me, people that got me going, and the people that kind of put me in the right direction. I want to thank my parents, my mum and my dad, because uh, they were like a lot of people coming out of World War II. They were pioneer people. My mum used to ride a horse 15 miles every day to school and then go to school, lunchtime feed the horse, and then in the afternoon ride the horse 15 miles back home to a country property in a place called Wollambilla. So uh, Dad was in the army. He was a uh, military policeman in Palestine. Came back, married Mum. And uh, Mum didn't like Sydney, cried every day. And eventually we moved to Roma when I was two. Great growing up in a country town. Don't have a lock on the door. Very uh, clean and, uh, and, and free life, which I really adored. I was a very young boy in Roma in Western Queensland, listening to 4ZR. And I got a request on the radio and the announcer said, this is for Gavin in May Street. And it was uh, Bobby V, the night has a thousand eyes. Well, I jumped on every bed in the house. I was so excited. And I think that's when I really got my first love for radio. I eventually moved to Brisbane, the big smoke, and uh, I finished schooling in Brisbane and then uh, I was in the choir at church and everything like that. So I thought I'll try singing in a band. So I was in a couple of bands and I was driving home from my day job in my 64 Holden panel van. And uh, I heard an ad on the radio for a radio school, Ben Beckinsale's radio school at 4BH in Brisbane. I thought, ooh, that could help me between the songs. I could talk to the audience and keep them vibed up and everything like that. I did the radio course and about a month into the radio course, I thought, oh, I'm loving this radio. It's keeping me in popular music. Got into uh, 4BC in Brisbane. I was there for five years. And then the big job, 3XY Melbourne. Breakfast Radio 3XY. The rest of the radio station was a screaming number one in Melbourne, but Breakfast was rating only three. Pretty competitive. Breakfast is always competitive. So uh, we uh, sat down and uh, came up with a good strategy. And the next survey, I was number one and, uh, and kept it there for the next few years. So one morning I was finishing breakfast and at nine o'clock, Paul Turner, the, uh, the uh, jock, late night jock, who was doing voiceovers on Countdown, came into my studio and he said, Gavin, he had a bit of a rough voice. He said, Gavin, what are you doing after nine? I said, nothing. I still had the Queensland Volvo with the Queensland plates on it. <laughs> so uh, he said, can you drive me down to Rip and Lee? And I thought, Rip and Lee, that's where Countdown is. I went, yeah, okay. So I drove, I drove him down to Rip and Lee. Paul didn't have a license. And uh, I was prepared to sit in the car. But he said, no, come in with me. He, I said, you sure? He said, no, come on in and see the studios. You'll love it. And I went, oh, okay. So I walked in, walked into a, a sound booth, and there's a copy of the top 10 on the table. And he said, now sit down and read the top 10 and sound like me. And I said, what's going on, Paul? He said, just shut up and do it. So I did it. Number 10 on the countdown. You know, the old top 10. And when I finished, Robbie Weeks and uh, Grant Rule walked in and said, you're the new announcer. You're the new voiceover on Countdown. Uh, you start at $60 a week and you start next week. And I said, well, what about Paul? They said, oh, no, he's, uh, he's going to Channel 7 in Sydney. He's going to produce the, uh, the Nostradamus special. If you remember the quatrains of Nostradamus, it was a huge show. And uh, Paul went up to Sydney to produce that, so he couldn't do Countdown. So basically, right place, right time. I was so fortunate, so lucky, and so grateful because it is a coveted role for every announcer. I had every announcer on my shoulder. If I made a mistake, there'd be an announcer in Wagga Wagga going, oh, I can do a better job than him. <laughs> so, so that was my pressure. So, I, you know, I'd like to thank all the guys at the ABC, in particular, Robbie Weeks, who unfortunately no, no longer with us, but he was a great director, and uh, Grant Rule and all those people. After that, I uh, went on to uh, work and do breakfast radio with Molly at uh, Eon FM. Well, that was while Countdown was going on. Well, that was pretty wild, because the Chevron disco in St Kilda Road went to 6 a.m. closing. Molly was on air at 7, so uh, I'd be there at 5, and uh, Molly would come in, hat a little like that, and I'd go, ooh, it's going to be a tough morning this morning. Uh, but uh, we're both Aquarians, we're both mad, uh, so we got on very, very well. And to this day, he's still my very, very best friend. I love him. 
Uh, after, after the success of Countdown, uh, lots of other radio stations, lots of MC work, voiceovers and everything like that. And then I saw an ad for a green card application for America. And I thought, gee, that would be good because I always try and climb the highest mountain. I never climb a small mountain. I always go for the top if I can. And I thought that would be interesting if I could get that. So I applied and I won. Oh, and in the meantime, I did 15 years of Tats Lotto draws on Channel 7 with Marianne Van Dorsler. So I go and I do one draw for 15 years and then I win another draw, which is the green card lottery draw. So I thought, you know, I should do it because I don't want to sit on the porch when I'm 70 saying, you know, I should have done that. You know, you don't want to have any regrets in your life. You want to go through and try every opportunity. So I went to America, stayed there for 12 years, loved it. Fantastic. Got in the movie business, did a bit. Haven't done a movie yet, but I got in the movie business. Uh, I've got a great partner who's, uh, who worked with me on Countdown, Adam Howard. And uh, Adam's done 125 movies in America, uh, visual effects and uh, sensational stuff. He's just finished a movie now and he's going into post-production. So he's my partner and, and we're, we've got about 65 screenplays that we're actively working and trying to sell in America right now. So look, it's all fun. It's all been a great career. So I'd just like to thank all the people that jumped on the Gavin Wood bandwagon. You're all near and dear to me. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It's been a great ride.